Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I put together 15 of my best St. Patrick's Day DIYs. This is going to include a St. Patrick's Day coffee bar and some other fun DIYs. So let's get started. We're going to use all these items from the Dollar Tree. We're going to start with one of these little green foam wreath forms from the Dollar Tree. And we're going to do like a small scale a St. Patrick's Day wreath to hang on my wall. I'm gonna use some of this burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I was really glad to see that they started carrying this. If you can't find this exact one, um, you can use uh, the thinner burlap rolls from the Dollar Tree. That would work well, but this is a really high quality burlap roll for the Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna start by wrapping the entire wreath form with that burlap to give me a nice coastal background for this DIY. So I'm just gonna start here in the back and kind of at an angle, just glue the tip down. And then we're just gonna slightly overlap each row like by like an inch if necessary to try to get that bend. This is not like a big wreath form. You could do this on a bigger scale though if you wanted to use one of like the wire wreath forms from the Dollar Tree. And I did do a large shamrock rope wreath that I have hanging in my front door um, in my 10 best St. Patrick's Day DIY videos is in there. That turned out really cute too. But this is kind of a mini wreath, which is great because you can hang it anywhere. So once I got it all covered, I am just hot gluing to the back across the row before I go in and cut off the excess burlap. So one roll was definitely enough to go over the entire thing. And then I wanted to use some of these little shamrock or clover flowers from the Dollar Tree. I grabbed two bunches and I thought we could wrap them around. Almost all of mine had two clovers on each one. Some had three and some had one. So I'm trying to like group them together in twos. And then the ones that had like three on there, I just kind of used those towards the end. But I'm just pulling them all off the stems, leaving two attached together like that so that I can tie those on to my wreath. I'm just gonna use um, twine from the Dollar Tree. It's gonna match that burlap nicely and just start tying those on, easy peasy. So I just kind of tie it around the stem that holds them together. And I'm just gonna tie a knot here in the back and then cut off a piece of that twine. Um, I just kind of estimated how long I was gonna need that to be. And then just start tying them on one at a time, kind of alternating. I'm trying to like hold my twine tight as I do it so that they don't really move around. I do have to secure them a little bit more than this um, to give it a little bit more shape. As you can see, they kind of want to flop around a little bit. So just grabbing two at a time, putting the string in between the two stems and going all the way around until I get to the other side. I wanted to do just a really cute, simple shamrock wreath. And I also have that great little shamrock sign that you see there that I think looks really coastal from the Dollar Tree. It's a galvanized metal um, shamrock with a little green wood one on there, so cute. When I get to the end, I'm just gonna go ahead and tie that off on the back against where we started. And as you can see, that's what it looks like at this point. They are attached, but they are a little wild and willy, <laughs> even though I kind of worked in one direction. So to kind of give it more shape and to make it look better, I'm just gonna go through with my hot glue gun and glue down one of the two clovers on each set to the wreath form to kind of make it look better and it kind of can cover up like the base of the stem before it just kind of picking whichever one i think needs it the most and just gluing one leaf down easy peasy i do still have like a couple leaves left that you see there those are the ones that had three on there and i kind of saved those back to kind of fill in any areas on the wreath form that kind of needed more 
They have two different kinds of these clovers at the Dollar Tree. This is the plain one. They also have the one with glitter. I find that the one with glitter is usually a little bit easier to find. It honestly would look pretty with either one, but I always prefer the one without glitter. So we got those all glued down. And then this is where I just kind of go in and just pull off individual flowers or clovers and just go in and just kind of patch up any bald spots. This was really easy to put together, but it's really cute. They have something similar at the Target Dollar Spot that's like mossy with like little shamrocks all over. That would be really cute as well. I'm just gonna cut off a piece of twine and just loop that around and tie it into a knot to make a super easy little hanger. And then we just need to attach the little wood and metal shamrock that we got at the Dollar Tree. This is it. I thought about changing the color of the green to make it a little darker like we did the other DIYs today, but then I kind of like the different shades of green. I thought it would look cute together. I'm just gonna kind of use the existing hanger on there because it's kind of stapled to the back of the metal and just kind of glue that to the um, underside here of my wreath to kind of make it like hang down right in the center of the little shamrock wreath. And I don't really need a hanger on there so I just cut off the excess. And that's all there is to it. Let me show you how this little guy turned out. I did kind of pull it up a little bit so that you can see it a little bit better. And let me show you how it looks hanging in my house. I think it turned out really cute. I don't DIY a lot with those little green reefs because um, I usually like to do a larger reef, but this turned out really sweet for an indoor decoration. I really love crafting with those little shamrock florals from Dollar Tree. I think they're so cute. My favorite are probably the ones without the glitter, but I enjoy both of them. Now, coming up next, we're gonna be doing a St. Patrick's Day coffee bar, and I just love how this turned out. Let's get started with a coffee bar sign. Now, this is just an old thrift flip sign that I have that you guys have seen me remake like 10 times. <laughs> it was a love letter for the Valentine's Day coffee bar, but we're just going to pop off this little burlap flower that we made. And we're going to convert this into a St. Patrick's Day coffee bar sign. It's the perfect size for the top of my coffee bar, and so I love using this sign. Now I'm going to change the color of it. I kind of thought since I was going darker, I could just kind of paint over the little white envelope lines, but I probably should have painted it white first because they do kind of shine through a little bit. Um, for the first coat, I'm just using this color. It's called Christmas Green in Acrylic just to kind of give me a base coat. I do want to do a little bit darker. I want to do different shades of green today. Um, green and brown. I don't really want to do any like bright rainbows or um, glitter or anything like that. I kind of wanted to keep it like a farmhouse feel for the St. Patrick's Day DIY. So just filling in a little damage from that heart with some spackle. And then remember if you don't have the color, you can always just add some black to whatever color and you can get your perfect shade. So I'm going with like this kind of like dark green color for my base. And I kind of want to make just an old um, St. Patrick's Day like cafe sign of some kind. And I've decided that I'm going to hand paint it because this sign, since I use it a lot, um, I noticed when I used the adhesive for the Christmas coffee bar, it, it left a lot of residue on it. So hand painting is probably the way to go. So I just used my Cricut and some of this Cricut vinyl. This is a stencil vinyl that I get on Amazon and it's available in my Amazon shop below as well as my paper transfer tape that I love. Very easy to work with, works pretty well. And you get a whole roll of them. So I'm gonna use the six inch paper transfer paper and I'll try to share the Cricut file. Um, basically, I just use Cricut fonts to spell out Shamrock Cafe. So 
just removing the backing paper from our stencil. If you don't have a Cricut, you could always do, you know, hand lettering or you could use stickers from the Dollar Tree alphabet stickers. And so I'm going to kind of line it up over towards the right because I kind of want to do like a shamrock over on the left. So just smoothing that out. Now the paper transfer paper is not clear, but you can see through it pretty well enough to line things up. And um, the trick is just to get your sen your stencil vinyl down as flat as you can. Anywhere you're going to have a little bump there. Um, the paint will definitely bleed through. But this actually worked pretty well today. If you're worried about bleeding though, you could always go over first with the existing color. That way any bleed would be green. And I'm going over with just a foam brush from the Dollar Tree in white. And at first the sign is going to look pretty crisp, but I'm going to go back and distress it pretty heavily to kind of make it look old, like an old cafe sign, kind of weathered. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. Um, make sure you put painter's tape down if you need to, because um, you don't want to be repainting any areas that you don't need to. So just going over um, both of them with a couple coats, just to make sure that I have good white coverage over that dark green color. And all of my stencils filled out. Basically, that's what I use my Cricut for the most is for stencils for hand-painted signs. I absolutely love it. So we're just gonna pop these off. I like this um, stencil vinyl because it does a great job. I'm not taking any paint off with it. And then we're just gonna weed out the center of our letters. Now I didn't really want to put anything on the bottom um, row of my sign because I'm gonna have things standing on my coffee bar there that'll kind of block that. So I didn't really want any writing there, but you could always add whatever you want to yours. You could do a, like Irish coffee. You could do like green punch. You could do like a, like a menu items like that. That'd be cute. Now I'm just mixing antique wax by Waverly and some white together to kind of give me this like wood kind of a driftwood color and I'm just going to distress all over and then I'm just going to go over that with a baby wipe to kind of wipe off the excess excess paint because I did distress it probably a little heavier than I planned to and just trying to make it look weathered and you kind of do need to do like your lettering first so you can kind of weather that as well then I'm going to go in with some white and weather it with that as well wiping off any excess with a baby wipe and we're gonna have a nice weathered sign I went back and forth about what I was gonna add to it I definitely wanted it to be um, a shamrock of some kind um, I got a really cute one at the Target dollar spot but I ended up using one from the Dollar Tree so just trying to make sure that that looks pretty good and this is the sign kind of is a perfect feel for what I'm going to for today. The colors are perfect. It's got burlap on it. it does a little bit look like paper though. So just slightly distressing the green part with um, some actual paint and kind of all over just to kind of make it look a little bit less like paper. But I love the burlap shamrock on there and I love the little um, bow. Everything is perfect and we can attach this to our shamrock cafe sign. Now there's two holes on the top. So I thought I would just use some of these little velvet push pins from the Dollar Tree to attach that. It's gonna make it super easy to remove. And so I'm just gonna put one on each side. The only problem is, I don't know if that shamrock wasn't quite flat or maybe my sign wasn't that flat, but it did kind of stick out a little bit there at the bottom. So I did have to use a little bit of hot glue just to glue the stem down. And that's all there is to this first DIY. We have a Shamrock Cafe sign for the top of the coffee bar. And I'm gonna kind of work my way down. Now I found this at the Dollar Tree and I thought it was so cute. It's a little horseshoe for St. Patrick's Day with a little clover on there that says welcome. Colors are perfect for what I wanna do today. It's got glitter, but it's like very tasteful glitter. I am still going to tone it down though with a little bit of matte Mod Podge just to make sure I don't really have any sparkling going on. Not really going for that vibe on these DIYs. 
And then just to break up a little bit of the wood, I thought I would distress it with a little bit of ivory and a chunky brush. Just very lightly. Totally not necessary though because this is so cute. This would be really cute on a tear tray as well. I really like it. It's a very classy St. Patrick's Day decoration from the Dollar Tree. Okay, up next, I got this mug. It says shenanigans and shamrocks. I got this last year at the Target Dollar Spot. Um, I would just left Target Dollar Spot, and they have some really cute ones this year, too. They have a gnome. They have one with a rainbow handle. They have some cute ones. I did get the one with the rainbow handle for a tear tray. So I'm going to fill that in with some floral foam and some Spanish moss, or actually reindeer moss, um, from the Dollar Tree. And instead of shamrocks, I wanted um, some white flowers because it's going to be in front of that dark green sign. I thought it would all blend in. So I'm just going to use some of these white baby breath of flowers from the Dollar Tree. They're a nice tiny flower, and it's going to fill up this mug really nicely. And it's not going to blend into that green sign behind it. I did want to do like just some kind of a St. Patrick's Day steak in there, like plant steak. And so I'm going to use one of these little wood bead um, ornaments they have from the Dollar Tree. It's a little leprechaun hat. And it is kind of busy with like a lot of glitter and stuff on that. So I'm going to kind of make it my own. Um, otherwise, if it didn't have all that glitter on there, I probably would have used it as is. Now, I thought I could cover it in burlap, and so I'm going to use one of these great burlap bags from the Dollar Tree to cover the little leprechaun hat. I love those bags. They're kind of like coated on one side with like a plastic coating. Um, makes it really easy to cut and draw on, work with. I'm just going to draw the shape of the leprechaun hat on the back of it so that I can cut that down to size. It cuts beautifully. And I love DIYing with it. I'm going to use that bag a lot today. Um, I actually got them in the Crafter Square section at my Dollar Tree. Um, but I've noticed not all of my Dollar Trees have it. But it's a great find. Gives you that burlap look. But it's like a synthetic burlap. So it's not going to fray or anything like that. I'm just going to Mod Podge that on top. Um, I don't think you're really going to be able to see that gold glitter through it. And then I thought I would just put the little strap back on the hat so you can kind of tell what it is. You can kind of see through the burlap enough just to draw that back on with a Sharpie. Finishing off with a little buckle. Then I'm going to use a little skewer from the Dollar Tree and make a little stick to attach to the shamrock hat. We can place that down into our little flower arrangement. Easy peasy. We're just going to hot glue that to the back. And put that in there. I like to use mugs a lot for my decor on my coffee bar. Just because obviously they're coffee cups. Don't have a lot of St. Patrick's Day coffee cups though. For my bar underneath my shelves. I actually had to use actual cups. Just wait though. I'm sure I have plenty of Easter. <laughs> so I just put that down in the flowers. Kind of like tilting it off to the side. And we have a little flower arrangement for the top of the St. Patrick's Day coffee bar. Super cute. And I love that saying on there. Okay, up next, I thought we could DIY this little wood house frame from the Dollar Tree. And kind of make a cute little St. Patrick's Day sign to go on the shelf of my coffee bar. So it's got the glass cut out in there I don't really want. I just want it to be a little tiny house. So I'm going to use that same little burlap bag from the Dollar Tree. Cut out a piece that we can cover the front of that frame with. And then I want to use that little Lucky you see that's on that wood bead garland that I also got from the Dollar Tree to decorate the front. So I just drew that on the burlap, cut it out, and then we can cover it. I was a little worried that you were going to be able to see that window through, but actually the shamrock pretty much covered it perfectly. So I am just going to put you know, a medium coat of Mod Podge down and glue down that burlap. I really love working with that. And just wiping off any excess glue. There is a little photo frame, um, like, stand there on the back of it. 
ended up not working that well for me, but it is it is there, which is one reason why I chose that little house. Now I'm just going to carefully untie this little shamrock from this. They have so many cute wood bead garlands for St. Patrick's Day at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to reuse that for another DIY for this project. And so I want all the twine to stay on there. So I just hot glue our little shamrock down that says Lucky. No glitter or anything on there. And I just need to cover the little hole in it though. So I just cut down a little tiny piece of twine. Tied into a bow. And we're just going to glue that on there. And we have a really sweet, easy little burlap house decorated for St. Patrick's Day. This is going to be great on the top shelf because it's not really going to interfere with um, the sign that I have kind of hanging behind it, the one that we just made. So I want to use like all different shades of green like that and um, browns like burlaps and rope. So I tried it on the coffee bar. It didn't, it wanted to lean back really far and I kind of wanted it to stand up straight um, so that you could see it. So I just pulled off the back and replacing that with a couple of the little mini Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree to make it stand up a little better. Okay, our next DIY is gonna be a redo of this little leprechaun hat from the Dollar Tree. It's covered in that like annoying uh, green tinsely stuff. And so it's just a matter of getting all of that off there so we can DIY a nice farmhouse style um, St. Patrick's Day decor. Now, the bottom part of the hat is way harder to get the tinsel off of for some reason. And then I noticed that, you know, the little plastic pieces are kind of like two different pieces kind of clipped together. So it'd probably be easier just to take it apart first. And that was the ticket. It was way easier to get in there at that point. Um, if you're gonna use one of these for your cage, make sure it's not broken. The top of mine was a little uh, crushed, which I didn't realize before. And it did make it a little challenging to get the shape right, but the shape and hat is gonna make it kind of actually look cute. So it doesn't really clip back on the bottom. So I just try to attach it with a little bit of hot glue, but otherwise the cage itself stayed together pretty well. Now, this is the Dollar Tree rope we're gonna use. It is kind of the thicker brown rope from the Dollar Tree. And I was positive like two packages of that was gonna be enough. It is the, I believe it's eight foot. Um, wasn't quite enough though. It actually took a little bit of a third package. So just hot gluing that to the top center of the hat and then we can just start spiraling around. Since this is all circular, it's gonna be super easy to wrap this with rope. And so I am using a little hot glue here and there just to make sure it stays down and in place and I don't wanna see any of that like green plastic cage poking through. Now, you might have to use a little extra hot glue here at the transition as you start to go down it, but you can just keep rope it, wrapping that same piece of rope until you run out. I'm gonna remove the tape from the end and glue that down and we can start a new package of rope, removing the tape on that one as well. Just make sure you get them pretty close together. You can always kind of fill that seam in and make it all kind of stick down with a little hot glue. And we're gonna wrap this around. It's gonna come to the base, the bottom, and start going around the bottom. But as you can see, it was just a little bit too short. So I am gonna have to open a third package, but that's okay. You guys know, I always have plenty of this. If I don't find it by the box, like the ropes at the Dollar Tree, I just ordered them online. <laughs> and free ship to store. So I added a little more, we got it good and covered, just using my heat gun to try to melt any hot glue that might be visible and to kind of clean up any seams. Then to get all the fuzzies off, I'm just gonna go over the entire leprechaun hat with a little lighter from the Dollar Tree, just burning off any strings or fuzzies that might be sticking out. Isn't it cute so far? I'm loving this hat. I was trying to fix the top a little bit from where it was caved in but I think it's gonna be okay. Now I wanted to replace the band of the hat. And so I thought one of these black leather purses from the Dollar Tree would be perfect. We could do a little leather strap on our leprechaun hat. 
Now I started cutting this. I was going to cut all the way around the bag and kind of do a strip. But I got to that point when I discovered it had an entire long handle inside, a leather handle, which would be perfect for a strap for it. So I'm going to use that instead. Just cutting off a piece of that strap. I love DIYing with those purses. They come in tan, black, and like a pink mauve color. So that is just the right size. So I'm just going to cut it down to size and we're going to attach our little black leather strap with hot glue. It really blows my mind that you can sell a purse like that for $1.25. And now I kind of need to replace the buckle. I don't want to use the like cheap paper glittery one. So I thought I also wanted to bring a little green into it. So I'm going to use some of this green burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree and just cut a piece down into a buckle. Um, with the wire on there, it's a little too big. So I'm just going to kind of cut it down to size. And just using my strap as reference because I kind of want to uh, make sure it's like the perfect size. So then I fold it in half so that I can cut out the inner rectangular part there. And we have a little green burlap buckle. I think that looks perfect on there. So we're just going to hot glue that on. And this was a great DIY for a coffee bar. It's just the right size. You could probably use this on a tear tray as well, maybe on the bottom shelf. Super cute. I think I've DIY'd one similar to this in the past. I'll have to check. And there's our little leprechaun hat. Okay, we're done with the top row of our coffee bar. So I wanted to take a quick moment to tell you about my Facebook group, my Facebook page, both linked below. And I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube. And I would love to see you over there. Now, if you join my Facebook group, make sure you follow my Facebook page as well because you're going to get different content on there that you're going to get in the Facebook group. Okay, let's start decorating this second, the bottom shelf of my coffee bar. I found this great sign from the Dollar Tree. The only thing I don't like about it is the glitter shamrock, so I thought we could pop that off. I'm using heat and, you know, a putty knife trying to pop it off, but be careful because watch what happens to mine. Ah, yeah, it ripped it. I'm like, oh no, but I think it's going to be okay. I'm just going to glue that back down. Carefully remove the paper. I was planning on replacing it with something anyway. And it didn't really mess up any of the writing on there. It says Shamrock, Aaron Gobra, St. Patrick's Day, Rainbow, Leprechaun, Kiss Me I'm Irish, Pot of Gold, and Lucky. Everything. Perfect colors. There's even burlap on there. But I thought instead of that little glitter shamrock, we could use some of these like little uh, plant sprigs of shamrocks from the Dollar Tree. To replace and it's going to give us a cuter like more farmhouse feel and so I am just going to hot glue those over the ripped paper and problem solved. <laughs> I was planning on putting those on there anyway um, but be careful they had that like really glued on and it's the perfect height for my second shelf. I'm just going to kind of lean it up against my wall. I'm not going to make a hanger or any kind of stand or anything like that. And then check out this little leprechaun hat that I got at the Target dollar spot. Now, this was a little pricier. It was $5, but super cute. If you wanted to make this, you probably could with the reindeer moss from the Dollar Tree. Just cut out a very simple hat shape out of some foam poster board. And then glue moss all over it. And then it also had a leather strap with a really nice gold buckle on there. Love it. I just need to make it stand up. So I'm going to use one of these little Dollar Tree signs. I use those all the time. I love them. They're so versatile to make DIY stand up. And so I am just going to kind of glue it in there, just trying to make space in between the strap and the hat, sliding that in there and hot gluing that to the mossy little leprechaun hat. Love the feel of this. They also have a shamrock, like a hollow shamrock like this that I bought as well that I'll have to try to use for another DIY. I don't normally like spending $5 on it, but I felt like it was worth it because it was really high quality. So I kind of tilted the hat a little bit just to add a little bit more character. And then I'm just hot gluing the strap onto the back of the stand to make sure that it stays uh, 
up there. It's not real lightweight like a Dollar Tree item would be. And so I want to make sure that it's not going to go anywhere. And that's all there is to it. You can always hang this on the wall too if you did not want to make a stand. But I think it's going to be perfect. It's going to bring in a little greenery. A super cute little leprechaun hat for our coffee bar. Now check out the size of these gnomes they have at the Dollar Tree. For $1.25, unreal. Colors on this one's perfect. I didn't want the orange beard one. They have a bunch of orange beard ones and orange haired like girl gnomes. But this one had the traditional white gnome beard, which is going to go more with my color scheme today. So I picked him. He's got a black hat with shamrocks on it and a green outfit with black shoes. Everything's going with my color scheme. I didn't really like the little shamrock that was on him. Though I thought it was a little too colorful, so I'm going to replace that with something else. But be very careful when you're using heat because you're going to end up with a hole like that. I don't know what that fabric's made from, from the Dollar Tree, but it melts. But I thought we could replace it with like a little burlap shamrock to kind of bring a little burlap into this DIY to make this guy really go with the rest of our DIYs today. And I have used black, so... Um, I'm fine with that. I did think about like recovering his hat, but I kind of liked the fabric that was on there. It wasn't too busy, if you know what I mean. Now, if you wanted to do yours more colorful, you could definitely do the one with the um, orange beard and have a little leprechaun on there. So I'm just going to replace that with some hot glue, gluing the little burlap shamrock on. And I just liked the feel of that a little bit better. But I can't believe how big these gnomes are for $1.25 from the Dollar Tree. Unreal. Now, he's looking really cute. I didn't think he really needed any more details. He's kind of perfect. But I kind of want to make him do something on the coffee bar. So I thought it'd be really cute if we had the little gnome, like, pouring coffee cream. And so I got a little white coffee creamer from the Dollar Tree. And I thought maybe we could have him like pouring it. So I'm just going to kind of put it in his hand like that. But first I want to decorate it a little bit for St. Patrick's Day. You could always paint on it. I'm just going to use a window decal from the Dollar Tree. Super easy. I picked one out that had like different shades of green on it. And it's kind of the perfect size for the little coffee creamer. Now, it is a decal, and that is like ceramic, but it does not really stick. So I'm going to use a thin coat of Mod Podge first to glue that down. But if I wanted to reuse that in the future, I'm sure it'd be probably pretty easy to peel that right off, kind of like a sticker. But now I have to figure out how to attach that to our gnome. It's pretty lightweight, um, the glass, so I think it's going to be okay putting it in his hand. So I thought it'd be cute if he was holding it kind of with his little right hand. So I do a little hot glue on his hand and then I glue that to the inside of the handle. So I can kind of put the little creamer at an angle like that, like he is trying to put some cream in your coffee. I thought that'd be fun. I wanted to do another kind of like little coffee DIY. I thought he was perfect for that. I don't want it going anywhere though. So I do hot glue it to his little felt foot as well, just so it, kind of stays in place. I don't want it falling off my coffee bar and it actually um, worked out really well. So there's our little gnome pouring coffee creamer. I can't wait till you see how these all come together. Now I wanted a couple tiny signs and the place I find tiny signs is the Target Dollar Spot for a dollar. I have this one left over from fall and I think I have one that I had left over from Christmas as well. Um, they do put them together a little better than the Dollar Tree though. So this one wasn't too bad, but the next one was really hard to get apart. So, but I wanted to pop the back off just because I wanted to paint them. That it'd be easier to paint them if I didn't have to tape off the inside of that frame. So I'm just going to use the back on this. So I don't have to worry about like the ripped paper and the design on the other side. So I just remove the tag with a little heat and, um... Kind of remove that residue on there as well. And then I thought we could do like a dark green color like we used for that coffee bar sign. And kind of make um, a little sign that we can like write some words on. So I just do one coat of green. The back is super easy to paint. 
Oh, and I was trying to remember the word gugon was what I used on it to get rid of the residue. But I don't want the back to look a hot mess with that ripped paper on there. So I'm going to use that same burlap bag that we used before just to cut a little piece to cover the back, attaching that with hot glue. And it's just going to make it look better. Finished back is always going to make a piece look better. And it's okay that you can kind of see the design through there a little bit. And then I'm going to use some paint pens. I got this one um, on Amazon. It's I think I put it in my shop. I'll make sure that I put it in my shop. It writes really well, really skinny, if you want to do a skinny Ray Dunn font like that. And I think it's called Posca is the brand. People use them for um, rock painting. I was very impressed with this paint pen. It works really well. I love the fine, fine temp tip. And I just spell out pinch me kind of in a Ray Dunn font and add a little shamrock on there as well, which is super easy to paint on. It's just three hearts combined with a little stem. I do go over that with another coat just to make sure that it's a little bit more filled in. And then we can pop that back into that wood frame. Um, I'm just going to put a little dot of hot glue in each corner. I don't want like glue going out all over the inside of it. And it's not going to take much to attach that back in there. And we have a cute little pinch me sign. I thought that was funny. There's some really good um, St. Patrick's Day expressions that you can put on signs. I saw one that was really cute. It said, no luck's given, <laughs> which is pretty funny. So this is the other little Dollar Tree sign that I have left over. This one was really on there. Like I used heat and a putty knife. I will cut that out because I'm going to save you all the stress. Because then I switched over to a razor blade and I thought, I'm going to cut it as deep as I can with the razor blade, um, doing both sides if needed to be able to get this apart. And that worked, finally. I thought I was gonna have to tape off the frame. It does leave a little ripped paper when you pop those off though. So I'm just using a razor to get all that paper off or at least anything visible. Now this kind of has ripped paper on it as well. So I'm gonna cut another piece of that burlap bag. We've only used half of it, but we've used it a lot today to cut out a little rectangle to cover the back of that one. And I thought we could just paint this one a different shade of green. I'm gonna put both of these little signs in front of that little leprechaun hat that we made. Um, the one that was um, from the Target Dollar Spot that's covered in moss. I don't really want them to be too big because I don't want them to block that adorable hat. So I just removed the tag on the back with some heat and some goo gone, and we can paint this one as well. I do have like several shades of green acrylic, really wasn't feeling this like leafy green once I got it on there. So I mixed the leafy green with my Christmas green, kind of gave me a medium shade of green, just kind of mix it up and we'll paint that one green. And then this one is really tiny. So I thought one word would be plenty. So I'm just going to put Irish on this one. And once you master that Ray Dunn skinny font, it is pretty easy to recreate and it's way easier to just draw it on there um, without having to break out your Cricut. Super cute. They're just long skinny letters with the like bridge of the letters is a little bit higher. And then a little hot glue in each corner. We can pop this little Irish sign back in there too. With the burlap back. Super cute. Okay, we only need a few more things for this coffee bar. Um, just making sure I get all the hot glue out. One of the corners it did pull up a little bit, but there it is. I thought these little gold coins from the Dollar Tree would be really cute to just kind of scatter around because it's St. Patrick's Day. And then I thought we would use that would-be garland that we have left over from earlier to make a cute little wood bead garland like banner on the front of one of my shelves. So I'm just gonna tie a loop there where I cut off the shamrock, remove the tassel. We can always reuse that for something else. Um, just trying to get it untied so I don't lose any um, of the wood beads. And I tied a loop on that. I thought this was gonna be long enough because my shelves are not very wide on my coffee bar. But it ended up being a little too short. So you'll see, I'm gonna go try it. 
a little too short, but I did have another one left over as well. And so I'm just gonna try to start and stop and repeat the pattern. I could always use the ones that were on the shorter wood beads as well, because I just needed this to be a little bit longer. So just repeating the pattern, I'm just gonna tie off the burlap, cutting off the ends so that can kind of fit inside of a bead and not be visible and just add a little bit more length, tying that into loop as well. And I'm not gonna add anything else to this because I wanted this to be a really simple. Now for the bottom shelf, I thought we could try out some of these new mini burlap pennant banners from the Dollar Tree. How cute are these? They come in this like triangular shape or like the traditional pennant. Kinda like this one better because it's a little smaller. They're called mini, which I didn't think they were too small. I can only fit about three on my shelf. So I cut out three and they are sewn around the twine so you can rearrange them to make sure that they're even. I also picked up some of this felt garland from the St. Patrick's Day section at the Dollar Tree. And I thought we could simply attach some of these great felt shamrocks to the front of that burlap. And I kind of wanted to mix it up and do like medium green, dark green, since we use many shades today. And that brown burlap background is going to be perfect. They are looped together though, so you do have to sacrifice a couple by cutting them to get to the one you want. And how much easier can you get than that? I'm so glad that they decided to start carrying these at Dollar Tree. So much easier than having to make them yourself. So these are very lightweight. So I'm just gonna use a dot of hot glue in the middle of each shamrock, doing the darker one in the middle, just for a little variety. And we have a little pennant banner for the bottom of my coffee bar. I don't have any St. Patrick's Day cups or anything that I really wanna show off. So I'm fine with these kind of hanging alongside of the cups that I have there. And this is how it turned out. My St. Patrick's Day coffee bar. I did this special request for one of you guys requ requested me to do it. And I really hope you enjoyed these DIYs. If you're not lucky enough to have made a coffee bar in your house, you could always use these for any kind of decor on any shelf or um, tear tray DIYs. They do really have some cute items at the Dollar Tree for St. Patrick's Day. And I know a lot of you guys have been thanking me for not forgetting St. Patrick's Day DIYs because so many crafters here on YouTube just skip this holiday. I think it is a fun holiday to craft for though. So I always try to include it when I can. Um, I also wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know about memberships. For $4.99 a month, you can get early ad-free access to my videos, and it's a quick way for you to support me here on YouTube. Okay, are you ready for another DIY? We're going to use a wood round from the Dollar Tree, and I thought we would make like just kind of a coastal St. Patrick's Day sign, something that says St. Patrick's Day. So I thought this wood round would be perfect. I love these from the Dollar Tree so much that I like buy them by the case and have them shipped for free to the store because they're so versatile. They're a great size and I love that they're plain wood. Now we're going to cover it with burlap. I'm going to use this like, it's like a synthetic burlap. I get it on Amazon. It is also available in my shop below. I usually use the burlap bags from the Dollar Tree. But they were not quite big enough to cover this whole thing, but you can use whatever kind of burlap you have if you have some from Walmart or you could stain it. You're gonna kind of get the same effect if you stain that wood. But I kind of wanted to do burlap on this one. So I just laid it on there, drew the design out. This is kind of like a slick um, synthetic burlap, super easy to cut. The only thing I noticed though was it was pretty difficult to glue down compared to like real burlap, but um, I didn't get my circle cut out perfect, but as long as I get all of the wood covered, I'm going to be happy with it. So I'm just using some Dollar Tree Mod Podge and I am putting down a thin layer of Mod Podge all over so I could glue that down. I thought that I had enough glue down, but you'll see it didn't really want to stick. And I don't know if it was that glossy coating on there or what, but I put it on there and smooth it out. And I'm thinking that like as it dries, it will kind of stick, but it wasn't sticking at all. It just fell right back off. So I'm going to go back in with the Mod Podge and do like a thick layer 
and see if that helps my situation. And it did. Um, probably thicker than I'm used to using, but I didn't really want to use hot glue for this application. So I got it on there, pushed that down, letting that Mod Podge like seep through the holes of the burlap helps it to, um, you know, stick a little bit better. And trying to stretch it out so that like all of the wood parts are covered, I can always cut off any excess after I get it on there. But finally got it to stick. It stuck even more after I dried it, of course. But what I have is I have a little burlap sign from the Dollar Tree that I'm going to use to decorate that with. And I thought that this burlap background would be perfect. So just using some sharp scissors, I am just cutting around the edges to give myself that perfect circle cut. And that totally did it. Now let me show you the sign that we're going to use. It is this little flag sign from the Dollar Tree. This is Happy St. Patrick's Day. It's kind of cool, but I kind of wanted it to be an actual sign. So I thought we could DIY it. So I am just gonna cut the little hat out um, right at the border with the brown part of the burlap. So I just get this green burlap Happy St. Patrick's Day hat. I love it because it's so simple and no glitter or anything like that. And I like the fabric feel. Now it's kind of made out of that same synthetic like burlap material that we used before. And I kind of had the same exact problem that I had before. I'm doing a layer of Mod Podge on the back of it. I thought I could just kind of stick that down like a sticker on the burlap, but again, I think maybe because they are just so slick, um, I had problems getting it to stick. I am trying to smooth it down. And I thought I used enough burlap, but I found that the top of the hat and the bottom of the hat was not really sticking. So I thought, well, before what worked was more Mod Podge. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to use more Mod Podge here. Putting it down a thick layer at the top, also going over the top of it to make sure this is really saturated so that it stays down because I was having a feeling it wasn't going to stay put. Once I did that though, I did half at a time, I really got it to stick better, especially once it got good and dry. So I'm going to do the same thing here on the bottom using a ton of Mod Podge. Lesson learned, the synthetic burlap needs a lot of glue. <laughs> So I give it a good dry. It's looking really cute. I did want to kind of um, border it out and kind of frame it out with something nautical. So I'm going to use that same white rope from the Dollar Tree that we dyed before. This is the thicker, the six foot white nautical rope. And we can frame that out with kind of a coastal border. It's also going to hide like the cutting around the edges and give it kind of a more finished look. So easy peasy, we're just going to hot glue this around, trying to get it all the way to the edge of my sign. When I glued the little burlap hat on there before, I made sure not to cover the little hanging holes. And I'm kind of trying to avoid them as well when I'm going around with the rope border. I'm just gluing that down. I'm going to keep working around. You don't want to do too much at a time because you don't want your hot glue to dry. And then cut it off here at the bottom. I'm going to kind of have like a seam at the bottom. I do plan to do a bow here um, at the bottom. So I'll be able to cover that up. So I don't really care if it looks too good down there. But it didn't look too bad. Then I'm just going to use one of these little weeders from the Dollar Tree and punch holes back into the fabric where there was holes on the little wood rum. I'm going to cut off some Dollar Tree twine and try to feed that through the back. I like to knot it in the front. I find that it holds better using that weeder tool to kind of needle that through and tie a knot here on the front. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here on the other side. Now I want to decorate this a little bit, add some coastal touches. And so I was trying to think of what I could do or add to this to make it look a little bit more coastal. I don't want it to be too busy. I really like the feel of it so far, but 
it's got like the little polka dots all over. And I thought maybe some of these little tiny seashells from the Dollar Tree, we could decorate the little polka dots with seashells. So I'm gonna use like the like standard like shell kind. And again, these are just the little tiny ones that you get in the little glass bottles with the little cork tops from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just trying to pick out ones that are kind of the same color, about the same size, and gonna pick out enough of those to cover all the polka dots on our little St. Patrick's Day sign. And if you didn't wanna do a coastal decor, you could totally uh, skip this step. And then I'm just gonna go in and hot glue. When I glue down the shells um, with hot glue, I find I really only need to get like one rim. And I'm kind of having them go like all different directions. And so just gluing like the lip of it and sitting the shell on there. And I go ahead and do that with all of them. Now I wanted to finish it off with some kind of a bow or something. Um, I wanted like a burlap St. Patrick's Day ribbon and I didn't really have any, but I do have this fabric left over from the top of that flag. So, you know, a good crafter never wastes good materials. So I thought I would just cut this down into ribbons that we can use to make a bow. I just want to do something simple like an expo or something at the bottom just to finish off the sign, make it not quite so plain. So I just kind of cut the usable fabric that I still had out, um, trying to get that square. And then I'm going to cut that in half again so it's not quite so thick. Just trying to think if that was going to be too thick, and I think it was. So I'm going to cut down into two strips. To form an expo. Now I thought that that might be a little bit too long of an expo so I am going to just shorten those strips a little bit until I kind of get it like the right scale that I wanted and we're just going to do a really simple expo. I thought we could use this DIY ribbon that we made and then I thought we could bring in some of that mesh ribbon that we used on the last DIY. I love this stuff. I like it in the tan the best, um, but I did pick up some green because I thought that might be fun to use for Easter. So I'm going to combine those. Whenever I do an expo, I like to use like three different kinds of ribbon. So I'm also going to add in some of this green burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I like to have a, like at least one that has like a wire rim, like border on it. It's going to help it keep its shape a little bit better. So we're gonna use it, that one on the bottom, we're just gonna X each set of ribbon. So easy, just take a zip tie and then just cinch that all together. I like to pull the little connector of the zip tie kind of towards the back and cinch it up. And then you can just trim off the rest of your zip tie. Super cute, super easy. And I think this is just the right scale. And we're gonna put it there at the bottom of our happy St. Patrick's Day sign. It's also gonna cover up the border and the little rope frame that we're. So I'm just going to attach it with hot glue, kind of on the inside ledge there of it. Super cute. And then to cover up the zip tie, I thought one of these little shamrocks from the Dollar Tree, a little clover would be really cute right there on top. Perfect finishing touch. And they have two kinds of the clover. This is the one without the glitter on it, but you could kind of use whatever you can find. And just hot gluing that down. I think that's all there is to this DIY. I think it turned out really cute. I did decide that my hanger was a little too long. It's always better to make them too long than too short. So I did um, shorten that a little bit, but this is how it turned out. And let me show you how it looks hanging on the side of my cabinets. I'm combining this with the first sign and I think they turned out really fun. Isn't that cute? So pretty and really easy to do too. I think it looks great hanging underneath the little shamrock there in my kitchen for St. Patrick's Day. You know we decorate for every holiday around here. And here is a full shot of how that turned out. And you could always make a non-coastal version of that for sure. If you're enjoying today's video, be sure to hit that like button. It really helps my videos. And don't forget to subscribe. We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers.
Okay, the next DIY, I want to do a pot of gold. So I picked up one of these little tinsel pot of golds from the Dollar Tree, and I thought we could DIY this into a fun coastal St. Patrick's Day DIY. But first, we have to get rid of all of uh, this tinsel stuff. So just kind of cutting it down the middle. They have it like wrapped around little hooks on the side. So pretty easy to get that all off there. And we can kind of do our own thing. But it's going to leave us that great cage. I love DIYing the tinsel products. Um, it's just a great starting base. I just kind of wish they would actually just come like this. <laughs> Some people like the tinsel though. I'm not a fan, can't say I'm a fan. But gonna clean that all up and we can get started. So it's got like the pot of gold and then like the little area at the top there where you can put gold coins. I thought we would do a rope pot. So I'm gonna use that same white rope we were using before, the six foot white rope from the Dollar Tree. I was gonna do brown rope on this, um, but I do have brown walls in my house, so I thought it would blend in. So I kind of wanted a little bit of contrast, so that's why I went with white. And I kind of wanted just, I thought about going all the way around it and wrapping it, but that would waste so much rope on the back that you wouldn't be able to see. So I thought um, about just doing circles. So starting in the middle, since it is an oval and not a circle, you kind of have to start with that oval shape. So see how I did like the long piece and then wrapped it around. And I'm gonna glue that first piece down to the very center of my cage and then just start gluing this around. Wherever there is like a little piece of the plastic cage, I'm gonna put down a little dot of hot glue to secure that down. Kind of working a couple at a time because I don't want that glue to dry and just gonna spin it around. And that's gonna give me that great like oval shape. I thought at first about just cutting them all lengthwise, but I kinda like this effect it gives me. So just wrapping around, I don't wanna do um, too much at the top there where I need to do the, the lid of the pot, but I'll show you how I get around that. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish off this first package of rope. So that's six foot, that's about how far that covers. Gluing that to the cage, and then I can just trim off the excess up here. Now I don't wanna really go any further in that direction to the left, because that's where I'm gonna be putting my gold coins or my version of gold coins. Um, so I'm gonna kinda of start underneath that when I start with my second rope. So I'm just gonna start right here at the top of the pot and just start gluing around. When I get to the top, I'm gonna stop again because I just don't want too much rope up there. I think it's gonna cause problems and cut it and glue it down. And then I'm just gonna go in with that same rope and go around again. Basically, I'm just trying to fill up any of the areas with cage. I got it on there pretty good and centered. Um, I do have to trim off a few tabs towards the end, but just cutting that one down as well. And I think I have room for one more row. I'm just gluing that all the way around. It covered like all the tabs on one side, but not so much the other side. So that's okay. I can just trim off those tabs, but we got pretty much the base of the pot covered in rope. And these are the, the tabs over here that you might be able to see, but they're easy enough to just snip off. And if you have like a hot glue mess on the underside, you can always clean that up a little bit with your heat gun if you want to. Now I have like the pot covered, but now I need to do like the, the brim of the pot around the top. And so I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna use rope, but I'm just gonna cut like long pieces to go straight across. And again, just gluing that down to the cage, I'm gonna kind of start at the top. And I think three rows of rope is gonna be good to cover that up without too much overlap. I kind of wish I would have cut um, the side pieces maybe a little bit longer, but I did get pretty good coverage with three pieces. This one will stick out a little bit though, just because of that little overlap part in the middle, but that's okay. 
So we have our little rope pot and, and now we're going to have to fill this with gold. I don't really want that open cage behind my gold coins. And so I'm going to use one of these Dollar Tree burlap bags. I love these. Um, I've been getting these at the crafter square. They're like a synthetic burlap like we used earlier. Um, but a great way to get these is at Dollar Tree. And you can always reuse the burlap. You can reuse the straps for DIYs. So I just cut the front off the bag. And basically, I just want to cut a little semicircle here. I'm just going to draw kind of what I need to do and cut that out. That way it's going to give me something to glue my gold coins to. And if there's any gaps between them, you'll be able to see the burlap behind it instead of just an opening or the plastic cage. So I'm just kind of trimming that down to size. And then we'll just attach that with glue. Now, since I'm doing a coastal St. Patrick's Day, I love to throw coastal in my DIYs. I'm going to use seashells for my pot of gold, um, painted gold. I thought that would be really fun. And so if you aren't going to do like a coastal feel for yours, you could always use the little plastic gold coins from the Dollar Tree. Those would work really well as well. So we got that glued down. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to um, kind of clean it up a little bit here by trimming off some of the excess fabric. I don't want it to be too floppy up here at the top. But I do want all those tabs to be covered up. And I probably should have attached the hanger at this point. Um, I do hang it a little bit later though, but it really wasn't a problem. Just trying to clean up some of my glue back there and we can start decorating this with gold coins but first we need to paint them i'm just going to use like junk um seashells that i picked up at the beach um they're almost all like bleached out like you know they're not perfect for sure um you could always use ones from the dollar tree though sometimes i have trouble telling the difference between the ones i get at the beach and the ones at the dollar tree to be honest but I don't really care what they are. I'm just kind of trying to pick out a bunch that are about the same size and same kind of shell. And I don't really care about the color because we're going to paint them. And I'm going to use th this gold metallic acrylic. I get this at Dollar General. And I love uh, painting with this. I think it works really well. So just using a brush um, because I want to get down into all the little grooves and details of the seashells, we're going to go ahead and paint all of our treasure gold. And I've done this on um, another pot of gold project that I did last year for St. Patrick's Day where I used the wood cauldron and stained it and then also painted seashells gold to be the treasure on that as well. So I really liked how that turned out. So I thought I would do another project like that. Anytime I can decorate with seashells or coastal, you know your girl is totally going to do it. <laughs> so I didn't really count or pay attention to how many shells I pulled out. I just kind of eyeballed it. I did end up needing one more. You'll see here in a minute, but... Just trying to get a good coat of gold on all these. Some of them were a little darker than others, so just going in to make sure everything's painted nicely. And just going over some of them, maybe with a little bit of a second coat, just to use whatever paint I had. We're going to give those a quick dry, and then we can attach those to our pot of gold. I'm just going to kind of randomly start attaching these by gluing those down. And I'm really glad I put the burlap down because I really did need like the extra surfaces to be able to glue these down to. And I'm just going to start kind of scattering them out. If I do have like a plastic base underneath, I do kind of try to lean it up against that to give it something else to adhere to. And just start kind of piling them in there however they're going to fit. So I don't have a lot of room for like the top of the pile here. So if I don't have enough room, I'm just going to start like kind of gluing them to themselves. 
And the hot glue works fine for this, but you do have to definitely give it time to dry. Just piling those up there. I kind of want just about as good coverage as I can get. If it slightly goes over the rope, I think that's going to be fine. So as you can see, I really kind of just wanted one more here at the end. So that's okay. I'll just grab another seashell and give it a quick paint of gold. And then we'll attach that on there. I was trying to decide if I wanted to do words or something like that to decorate the pot of gold, but I um, decided um, a, just like a simple shamrock would be enough. And so that's what we're gonna do to decorate this pot of gold. So we have enough gold coins and I'm gonna use one of these little craft kits from the Dollar Tree. There is a little shamrock in there. It does kind of have like a light green shamrock as well with like a funny face on there, but we're just gonna use uh, the little shamrock and these are just great for crafting. They have all different kinds. They have rainbows, leprechauns. Um, I picked up two different kinds of these. They even have like little um, St. Patrick's Day gnomes that I use for my St. Patrick's Day gnomes tear tray. And so it has one side with writing, um, one side's plain. We're just gonna glue that down in the center of our pot here, um, the writing side down. The felt works well against the rope since they're both like fabric. And you could kind of leave it like that if you wanted. I wanted to kind of dress mine up a little bit more um, by adding some moss to mine. But first I'm gonna go ahead and make a hanger just by flipping it over and using some twine from the Dollar Tree. I'm trying to work that underneath my cage here. Just need to get it around there, kind of in the middle. And then all you got to do is tie a knot. You can have a hanger, super easy, kind of similar to the ribbon one that was on there before. Now to dress it up with a little bit of moss to make it look kind of prettier and match some of my other decor, I'm going to use some more reindeer moss and just kind of working one leaf at a time. I'm just going to glue moss on there with hot glue to kind of give it that little shamrock shape. You could totally do this without that little felt thing under it, but it definitely helps you um, try to give you the shape. And also, I don't go all the way to the edges. I leave kind of a little bit of a green border around the edges. Just because I don't want it to look like a big blob of moss. <laughs> And that's basically all there is to this DIY. I think it turned out really fun. My little pot of gold. I'm going to hang this in my dining room with that little um, lucky mossy shamrock that we just made. And it wasn't too hard to put together, but I think it turned out really sweet. Just trying to clean it up a little bit, make sure I have all my hot glue burnt off and this is how it turned out our little pot of gold I thought that was definitely a fun take on what it looked like before for sure and this is what it looks like hanging in my dining room for St. Patrick's Day and I think it would look really cute with any of the gold coins from the Dollar Tree too if you wanted to do a less coastal version but I always have fun crafting with the Dollar Tree white rope. I think it's really fun. And I love the little mossy shamrock touch on there. So cute. Okay, you guys have made it all the way to the final reveal. I hope you enjoyed these 15 St. Patrick's Day Dollar Tree DIYs. I had a great time putting this video together. Um, don't forget to like, comment your favorite DIY below, and please subscribe. Enjoy the final reveal. I'm walking down the street on clouds instead of the concrete. I'm dancing through. Everything's about to come my way. Nothing can ruin my day. No matter what anyone does or say, I smile at fools. No, I don't care because I am on my way up. And I won't stop. I won't slow down. Standing on my feet, I'm going to rise up. No, I won't stop. It is my time. know what it's like to be broke I know what it's like when nothing goes your way So I'm gonna let myself enjoy The fruit from this lucky day Yeah, I 
I am on my way up. I won't slow down. Yeah, I am on my way up. I won't slow down. I'm strolling down the street with all of my favorite songs on repeat. I'm dancing through. Everything's about to come my way, and I don't care if you spill coffee on me or if the sky is gray or blue. No, I don't care 'cause I am on my way up, and I won't stop. I won't slow down. Standing on my feet, I'm gonna rise up. No, I won't stop. It is my time. 'Cause I know what it's like to be broke, yeah. It's like when nothing goes your way, so I'm gonna let myself enjoy the fruit from this lucky day. Yeah, I am on my way up. I won't slow down. <laughs> yeah, I am on my way up. I won't slow down. so much for watching today's video and making it all the way to the end that always helps i always want to give a huge thank you to all of my crafty beach fun members for supporting my channel here on youtube thank you so much to karen o'haran melinda elizabeth jamie job susan edmonds carrie r tracy knight nancy wunner julie miller tammy coates janae farrington pamelia wren maria grace Donna Schreiner, Sandy C, and Iris Cornelius. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Now, if you'd like to watch some more Dollar Tree DIYs, YouTube thinks that you might enjoy this video right here. Happy crafting and happy St. Patrick's Day.